Welcome. Each year I put out a brief list of the major astronomical events that are going to occur during the coming year. This is my 2023 astronomical calendar. Please enjoy. It looks like 2023 will be an exciting year. We're going to talk about the sun and what's going to happen during this year as far as the sun. This is not generally predictable, but it's a time of great interest because it's not predictable. Geomagnetic storms, something again that's not predictable, but will happen because of the high activity on the sun. Then there's meteor showers. These are highly predictable from a time point of view, but not from an intensity point of view, as you will see. Then we're going to talk about each of the planets and when you can best see them. And then we're going to talk about the Earth, the Moon and the solar and lunar eclipses in the coming year. Solar activity is on the rise. The sunspot cycle is approximately 11 years long but it varies from anything from eight to 14 years. So we can't predict exactly when the solar cycle is going to be. The last minimum was observed to be in December of 2019. And so solar cycle 25 started in January of 2020. So the $20,000 question here is when will maximum be and how big will it be? Now here below we have some of the sunspot data plotted out as a function of time. The black line with the diamonds on it are the actual observed sunspot data. Now the interesting thing here is this red curve, which is the prediction of NASA and NOAA for the, their best guess at what solar cycle 25 will be like. And it's remarkably similar, perhaps a bit larger than solar cycle 24. However, the data so far has been vastly exceeding that prediction. So that says one of two things, either this is going to be an early peaking cycle of anything up to the size of solar cycle 25, or we're gonna have a much larger cycle than that was predicted. And that's what I've been predicting for some time now. Now you can follow this on my YouTube channel. Every month I do a summary of the status of the sun. So you can see what's going on, but even so you can actually look at the solar data yourself and come to your own conclusions. It's obvious that we can't predict solar activity very well. The predicted date of solar maximum 25, the earliest was about April of 2022, so that prediction was particularly wrong. The latest was 2026, and my prediction was mid-2024, which is in line with most other predictions as far as this cycle is concerned. The peak of the cycle, uh, the lowest prediction was zero. Somebody was predicting a new moon to minimum, and then consequently a little ice age, which we can basically ignore that because we're well past that stage. The highest was over 250. That's still possible. My prediction was 165, which was made in 2020 and is slightly below the average peak of the previous 24 cycles. So this is an exciting time to be watching how the sun is changing. But you should never look directly at the sun or through binoculars or a telescope at the sun. That was a very good way of damaging your eyesight permanently. You can get space based data anytime you like by going to the NASA Space Weather Sites, the NOAA's Prediction Center, or the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. They have both the space-based and the ground-based data all summarized ready for you to take a look at. I do a daily Twitter feed on what's going on in the sun. If you're going to use a telescope, if you want to use a telescope, there's a couple of ways you can do it safely. One is by projecting the image onto a white screen from the telescope, or you can get a full aperture solar filter and then look through the telescope, but it must be an approved complete filter as solar activity increases, we're going to get more geomagnetic storms. Geomagnetic storms result in aurora, flight diversions, electricity grid disruptions, GPS errors, satellite damage, and satellite data loss. So these can be a big deal for the modern society. You can track space weather effects from NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. Just look for the section on the main page called Space Weather Enthusiast. There's a very nice summary of all the major factors that can affect us there. Meteor showers are predictable to some extent, uh, the name, mainly the date at which they occur, because we know where the clouds of dust and gas are on the path of the Earth's orbit. So we know when we're passing through those. So there's a range of dates when these meteors can occur. And of course, we know where they are because uh, there's a particular radiant point which they come from. The question is, when is the peak rate going to be? Now, this is a bit more chancy, and the real uh, issue is what the peak rate is going to be. 
and you can have anything from over 100 uh, meteors per hour down to five. Now the other factor here is what is the moon doing? If you've got a full moon or a near full moon, uh, you're not going to see most of the faint meteors. So I've ranked those as bad. Half moon or quarter moon or something of that sort is, or I've ranked as poor. If you have a moonless night or, or a very minimal amount of moonlight, I ranked it as good. So there are really four good meteor showers this year. That's the Lyrids in April, the Perseids in August, the Leonids in November, and the Geminids in early December. One of the most interesting things as far as most people are concerned are where are the planets? And this is a little chart showing where the various planets are going to be or when they're going to be best observed in the coming year. Mercury is often uh, shown here because it's moving around the sun fastest and oscillates between being a morning star and an evening star. But it's remarkably difficult to see Mercury. You have to be up just before sunrise or just after sunset. You have to have a perfectly clear east or west horizon to catch this little bright object before the sun rises and washes it out. Venus will be an evening star in June. And that's usually quite spectacular and a morning star in October. We have Saturn in opposition. That means that the Sun, the Earth and Saturn are in a line. So Saturn is at its closest point during that year. So it's going to get the best view of it. Similarly for Neptune in September and Jupiter in November and Uranus in November as well. Well, the moon is the most obvious visitor to the nice sky, and so we get lots of opportunities to see it. There's 29.5 days between full moons, or, and also obviously new moons. The first full moon of the year is on the 6th of January. The first new moon of the year is on the 21st of January. There is only one blue moon in 2023. The next one won't be until 2026. And that's on the 31st of August. A blue moon is when two full moons occur in the same month. So the only month that can't have a, a blue moon is in fact February. The quarter days, the vernal equinox, which is on the 20th of March this year. The estival solstice, which is basically called the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. And the June solstice in the southern hemisphere is on the 21st of June. We have the autumnal equinox on the 23rd of September and the hibernal or winter solstice on the 22nd of December. We have four eclipses in 2023. The first is on the 20th of April. It's what's called a hybrid solar eclipse. The second is the 5th of May, which is a penumbral lunar eclipse. The 14th of October has an annular solar eclipse. And the 28th of October has a partial lunar eclipse. So let's go into each one of these in detail. We'll start with the hybrid solar eclipse on the 20th of April. Well, what is a hybrid solar eclipse? It starts as an annular eclipse. One end of the eclipse path becomes total uh, for the main phase of the eclipse and ends again as an annular eclipse. These are quite rare and there's going to be one this year. Unfortunately, for those of us in North America, it's not going to be particularly visible. It's going to be best if it's seen from Southeast Asia. It's partial from China to New Zealand. However, the main eclipse doesn't really cross very much land at any point. On the 5th of May, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse. Well, what is a penumbral eclipse? Well, there are two shadows that the Earth casts. It's called the umbral shadow, which is where if you're in that band, you the Earth eclipses the sun completely. And then around that, there's an area where the Earth only partially eclipses the sun. That's called the penumbral part. So this eclipse is where the moon's path takes it through the outer shadow of the Earth. And so it will dim the moon slightly. And in fact, if you didn't know it was happening, you probably wouldn't notice it. So where can we see this? Most of the planet sees the, the penumbral eclipse. However, North and South America are pretty much excluded. So uh, it's not a great loss that we don't see much here because it will just be a slight dimming of the moon. On the 14th of October, we have an annular solar eclipse. This is another rare sort of eclipse. So this is going to be an odd year for solar eclipses. What causes an annular solar eclipse? Well, the first thing is the Earth's and Moon orbit are not circular. So at times we're closer to the Sun than other times. And similarly for the Moon, sometimes the Moon is closer to us or further away from us. 
And so they're, the apparent diameters of the sun and moon change all the time. When the sun is at its closest to us in January, and all the moon is at its furthest from us, the sun becomes larger than the moon in angular diameter. So when that happens, the moon, if it passes right in front of the sun, doesn't eclipse all of the sun, just a part of it, and leaves a ring of the sun visible around the edge of the moon. This is why it's called an annular eclipse. So when and where can we see this eclipse? It starts off in North America, in Oregon, travels along the Central American coast and out off into the South Atlantic through Brazil. Just about all of North and South America, with the exception of the southern tip of South America, will see this as a partial eclipse of some sort. In astronomy, there are a lot of unpredictable events. And so you're gonna to have to keep your ear to the ground uh, or my, my channels to see what's going on. Uh, examples of these are comets. Comets can wander into the inner part of the solar system without very much warning and create quite a show. We don't know where all the asteroids are and sometimes some of them zip pretty close to the Earth and if you're quick and know exactly where to look, you can see one of them. Solar flares are completely unpredictable, at least in the long term. And so again, my channel on uh, YouTube and on Twitter uh, talk a little bit about this and give you some idea of what's going on. And there's always this exciting possibility that we will see a nova or a supernova in our sky. It's been nearly 400 years since we had a visible supernova, and it'd be rather neat to see one. So I wish you happy stargazing for 2023. May your skies be clear when you need them to be. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe and goodbye.